What is up guys, Faded here and welcome back to the channel for another video and today we're going to be editing on the Lenovo IdeaPad Y700 with a GTX 960M and an Intel i7-6700HQ. We're going to be moving some video around, transitions and such like that and shortening some clips, uh, making them play through faster and see how well the computer handles drop frames and stuff like that. Alright, but before we dive straight into that, let's go ahead and look at some of these benchmarks. Now we have Cinebench right here, we got that loaded up so I'm going to go ahead and run it through Cinebench and we're going to see how well it performs. Now we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this so you don't have to watch all of that. It can take quite a while. After we got through here, it, we got some pretty good scores and that is a desktop CPU. So we are getting desktop level performance on the 6700HQ. Now you can also see the 4770K up above it, which is my gaming rig CPU. And so it got quite close to that as well. And the 4770K was a very popular CPU back whenever it first came out. All right, but just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and run it through OpenGL and see how it performs. Now, just as we did before, we're gonna go ahead and fast forward through all of that so we don't have to watch it and can take quite a while. Okay, so some half decent score there. Now you can also see the GT650M. So do keep that in mind that it scored less than the 650M. And you can keep that in mind whenever you're looking to buy a PC. But before we get back to editing and transitioning and stuff like that, let's take a look at our Firestrike score. I did run it through Firestrike and it did perform just above gaming laptop level on whatever scale that they use to figure that out. But it's just above 4000 so it's a pretty decent score for the GTX 960M. Now I wanted to show you guys the color accuracy on the Lenovo IdeaPad screen. It does have an IPS panel. Now I will say that it does have some really accurate colors but we do suffer from a little bit of saturation loss. It, the colors are a little less saturated than they should be. You can see in this image here now brightness is pretty decent. I mean it does lose a little bit of that as well now you can compare it to my other monitor here this is a very very expensive editing monitor so i mean really to compare the two is not really fair for the, the lenovo but anyways i just wanted to give you guys a comparison just to see how well it does look now i haven't calibrated this screen at all i'm sure you could do more you could upgrade the saturation as well and try to get there without some clipping and such but the the other monitor has already been you know calibrated and then the screen looks very good and we've got it exactly where we want it so just go ahead and take a look and compare these two images here and see if it's something that you're going to want to go for and it's something that you could work with but anyways let's get back to the benchmarks all right so we have my battlefield 4 video which is on the gtx 960m as well if you haven't seen that video go ahead and look in the description and watch that video before we go through all that all right now also you can see at the top we are playing at preview auto so that's that's on auto where it's going to throttle back the frames or whatever and throttle back the resolution whenever it needs to in order to display frames faster but we'll go ahead and see how well it handles preview and then we'll switch it to full okay so just jumping around the clip here we uh we get very few drop frames so that's very nice but to push it a little bit harder let's go ahead and split this video and we can drop a good transition in here and see how well it handles that minor transition. All right, so it seems like it handles that transition quite well. I don't see any hiccups there. So that's very good. That's a good sign. I mean, maybe a little bit of drop frames, but that's about it. All right, so let's go ahead and put the preview on full. Now we use auto just to give you kind of control group and a baseline for performance, but we're going to turn it up to full to really push this system to its limit. Now, one thing that's really hard for these editing programs is shrinking video and making it play frames at a lot faster speed. So it's trying to display all of that data and keep up with that 60 frames per second. All right, so we sped up the clip to about double the speed. Now we can also see that we're displaying about 25 frames per second. That's about the average of what we're getting here, maybe 30. So you can see that it is dropping quite a bit of frames and it's not able to keep up. But this is in preview mode and it's doing all of this in live mode. So it's doing it in real time. So that does take quite a bit of work to do. I mean, even really powerful editing PCs have a hard time dealing with this. But I'm just showing you that, I mean, this is twice the speed and it's keeping up to about 30 frames per second, which is visible to you and won't really cause stutter for you. But let's go ahead and chop the video and make it transition from a regular speed video down to a really fast speed video so we can see how well it handles that. And we'll also add in a little cheesy transition here as well. So you can see it does kind of hiccup during that transition. We can go back and play that again. 
Now, right when that frame wipe starts to come around, it does kind of hiccup a little bit, but that's because it's picking up speed and it's all of a sudden trying to boost the CPU and, you know, call for more performance and stuff like that. So we do see a big frame dip right there, but that's okay. It's normal. Just showing you guys how well it performs. All right, so let's take two separate clips that are sped up and we can go ahead and try to merge them together in a transition and see how well it takes that transition. Now you're moving from one high speed video to an entirely separate high speed video. So I have no idea how well that's going to perform. All right, so we did our clock wipe transition. We got that in here. Now you can see that it does drop to an amazing 11 frames per second. So it gets way down there, but that's just during the transition. And you can also, you know, render this out in Sony Vegas to make it play a little bit faster if you like. But just for the sake of time, it does perform very well in real time. But let's try one more thing. Let's go ahead and stretch this clip out and see what it does whenever we stretch it out. Now we're going to stretch it out just a little bit above whatever it, its real time speed was. So rather than being one for one, one second for one second, it's going to be like one and one tenth of a second. This is also sometimes pretty difficult for PCs because it actually has to make up frames that aren't really there. But it does handle that quite well. It does keep right at the 60 just like it did before, but it's not really, we're not stretching it too much, so it's not having to make up a whole lot of frames, maybe one every so often. But to give you guys an idea of how long it's going to take to render, let's go ahead and get this rendered out and show you guys how long it's going to take. All right, so we're going to use AVC settings and we're going to set the profile to high. The bit rate, which is important, I shot this at about 26 or 24. Now we're going to use 12 just so we can try to push the PC to compress that data like really down to about half the size. So it's quite a bit of work. And also we're going to we're going to render out in 59.94 rather than 60 because I am seeing quite a bit of drop frames there. So 59.94 might be better, but, but we're not looking for quality on the export. We're just looking to simply push the PC to its limit here. And we're just going to see how long it takes to render out a three minute video. Now you can usually expect to, to render about a little bit more maybe about 25 to 40 percent longer than your video is so if you have a five minute video it'll usually take around seven or eight minutes now one last thing before we start the render process we are going to use the render if gpu is available because obviously when it, we want to test the gpu the 960m so it'll give it a chance and i can usually be a lot faster than cpu only but let's go ahead and see how well it does all right, so we ended up with seven minutes and 41 seconds, which is not too bad. It's about double or even almost three times as long. So it will take quite a bit of time to render out a video, but hey, I mean, you got a portable PC, you can take it with you wherever you wanna go and you're not you know, stuck to a desk and only able to render at one place. But anyways, guys, if you have any more questions, please let me know down in the comments below. And as always, be sure to like the video, comment and subscribe, and you guys have a good one.